If you are anything like me, you like to get dinner started well before it's dinner time. That way, when it's the end of the day, you're kind of tired, you're hungry, you don't have to cook. It's already done. Today, I am bringing you eight recipes that all are cooked in the crock pot. They are perfect for this time of year and they are tried and true in our household. Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the making. Six pieces of bacon that I've cut in half in here. The recipe calls for eight, but these are really large pieces of bacon that I have. So I just cut them in half. I've got them on medium high. I'm gonna get that going and while I do that, I'm gonna chop up my veggies. I didn't quite use the whole chicken, more like half of the chicken. I just pulled all of the meat off and then I used my mix and chop and just kind of sh shredded it with that. I don't think I showed you what we were gonna be using for the recipe. I've got frozen corn, rotisserie chicken, uh, diced tomatoes, fire roasted diced tomatoes, lima beans, salt and pepper, chicken stock, apple cider vinegar, I've got a cup of barbecue sauce, four tablespoons of chipotle pepper sauce. Hang on and I'll show you what that looks like. That's it right there. Then I've got onion, garlic, and bacon. Okay, I've got our onions going here in the bacon fat. I'm just gonna cook these for a couple of minutes. This was just one large onion that I chopped, and then I have six cloves of garlic roughly chopped. Our onions are pretty soft. I'm gonna add in our garlic just for like 30 seconds to a minute, and then it's gonna be time to put everything in the crock pot. I've got two cans of lima beans that I have drained two cans of fire roasted diced tomatoes. It said a large thing of frozen corn. This is really large, so I'm not gonna use the entire thing. I've got four tablespoons of chipotle pepper sauce, one cup of barbecue sauce, two thirds a cup of apple cider vinegar, five cups of chicken stock. Now I'm gonna add in our chicken. I'm gonna kinda tear apart our bacon as I add it in. And just a heads up, this is filling up my crock pot and I'm using my large one so make sure you use a really large crock pot for this. And lastly I'm adding in our onions and garlic. I am draining off the extra fat. That's everything. I am going to add just a little bit of pepper. Mm -mm. Bacon, chipotle, it's going to be good. <laughs> Chipotle flavor is really good. That does not taste how I thought it would. Yeah, be. it's very unique taste. It's, um, but it's good. You definitely get the, the the hot sauce chipotle flavor in there. Awesome, Cole. Mm. You approve? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. He doesn't really want to talk. He just wants to eat. Oh yeah. It is such a different style of soup than anything I've ever made. That is amazing. And Lou is trying to get some. <laughs> You will not like this, Lou. <laughs> this recipe is really easy and really quick. This is, would be a great one for you to put in the crock pot before you leave for work. And there's just a couple of ingredients that you have to add in right before you eat. Since these cloves are so small, I'm doing four small ones because it calls for two cloves of garlic. It doesn't tell me exactly how much cilantro to add. So I'm just gonna roughly chop this and add it in. I've got a little over a pound of Boneless, skinless chicken breast. It calls for a pound. Add in a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of black pepper. One teaspoon of cumin. Three fourths a teaspoon of oregano. Half a teaspoon of chili powder. And a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Put in our diced onion and our minced garlic. This is two 15 ounce cans of Great Northern beans that have been drained and rinsed. About eight ounces of diced green chilies. One can of corn that has been drained. 24 ounces of chicken broth and the cilantro. I'm just gonna stir this up a little bit. We're gonna let this cook on low for most of the day or you could do high for three or four hours. I'm gonna do low for about six hours probably. And then we'll come in and shred it and add the other ingredients before it's time to eat. This has been cooking all day long. Now I'm going to shred up the chicken. I'm just gonna use this tool. This is from Pampered Chef. I've got one linked in my Amazon store that's very similar. It's called the Mix and Chop. I use it for so many different things, but I'm gonna reach in here and just shred this chicken really well. Now I'm gonna add in half a cup of heavy whipping cream. 
The recipe calls for four ounces of cream cheese and a fourth a cup of half and half, but my guys are not big fans of cream cheese in dinner recipes. So I checked the comments below the recipe and saw that several other people said they weren't a fan of cream cheese and this is what the person who published the recipe suggested. Love me some white chicken chili. It's been a long time since I've made it. Yeah, it has been a while. And this is very different than what I've made in the past. You know, usually you have the McCormick packets or whatever, right? Yeah. But this is more like homemade. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Mmm. Oh, man, that is really good. Definitely spicy, like I like it. Not too spicy, but... We put a little bit of cilantro on top and then just a dollop of sour cream in there just to make it a little mm. creamier. I love the freshness of the uh, cilantro. But yeah, this is really good. I love the texture of the corn in there too. It gives it a little bit of a crunch. Gracie, are you excited? Grace. Are you so excited? She's like, nope. Oh, we could put cheese in it. If we brought cheese out, Somebody would be really excited. I love you, girl. Tonight we're having crock pot Swiss steaks. We're using cube steaks for that. And I'm gonna serve it with mashed potatoes and more than likely I'm gonna make a green bean casserole. Okay, not a whole lot of chopping. I'm gonna chop up this onion, one stalk of celery, these couple of carrots, and we are gonna just slice. We're not gonna mince our garlic. So the first thing we're gonna do is just add all of our veggies to the bottom of the slow cooker. I did use a liner. You don't have to, obviously. This helps with cleanup, makes it that much easier. Okay, so I've got a little bit of flour in here and then I've got four cube steaks. I dropped a little bit of flour on there. And then I have a cat, Gracie Lou. I'm just going to season these with salt and pepper and put them in the flour, just coat them. And we're gonna go over to the stove and just sear these on both sides. Okay, so the recipe calls for white wine, but I'm just gonna use extra beef broth. I didn't wanna get wine just for that but I've removed all of my steaks here and I've just got some really good bits on the bottom there. I'm gonna deglaze this pan and then we're gonna go over the crock. So I'm just scraping up any little bits here off the bottom. Went ahead and turned the pan off. Okay, let's go do this. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is add our steaks in, our cubed steaks. They are obviously not all the way cooked. Now let's add in our beef broth that we used to deglaze the pan. And the recipe calls for one cup of beef broth and a half a cup of white wine. So I'm just doing this whole can of beef broth because it's about a cup and a half. Now I'm gonna add in a can of tomato soup. You could definitely just use diced tomatoes, but if you've been around for a while, you may or may not know that Cole, my son, does not really like the texture of diced tomatoes. And so I saw this in the notes that if you want a creamier sauce, you could just use tomato soup. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna add in just a couple of tablespoons of tomato paste, about a half a teaspoon of dried thyme, a tablespoon of the dub sauce, and we're just gonna finish it up with a little more salt and pepper. And that's it. We are gonna put the lid on this and cook it on low for six to eight hours, or you could do on high for four to five hours. I'm actually gonna do it on high for about an hour and then I'm gonna come in and change it over to low because it's already lunchtime a little after. So I just wanna make sure all of our veggies get soft enough. Wow, okay, this is gonna be interesting. I don't know if I've ever had anything quite like this before. Yeah. Wow. That sauce is really, really, really good. Is it? Yeah, the meat is like fall apart. Yeah. But that gravy, that's special. Well, I was just really happy that it was as thick as it was that I didn't have to add any cornstarch to yeah. it. That's a whole other step that I got to skip. But mm. Some sort of tomato base, I guess? Yeah, it's got tomato soup actually in there. Oh, okay. And tomato paste. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. It's really good. It's a it's a, uh, it's definitely a unique gravy. 
Yeah. That you would put on a steak. Yeah, it's a, it's a tomato base. But it works so. really well, I think, because of the, you know, the, how you cook it in the crock pot yeah. all day long. Yeah. So Cole is busy eating, and so is Steven. And then I sat down <clears throat> and finally got a few bites, and this is really good. Mm -hmm. Steven just keeps commenting about how this gravy is just so different, and it is, but it works so well. It is very unique. Gracie, what do you think? We are having what, babe? Jambalaya. So here's everything we're gonna need right now. The only thing that I'm adding in is this jalapeno because y'all know. Um, we'll need rice later. We'll be adding that in a good bit later. All right, we're gonna get started by chopping up our veggies. I'm gonna use my veggie chopper today. Okay, I just sprayed my slow cooker with some nonstick spray. First thing I'm gonna do is add in some crushed tomatoes. I have a 28 ounce can. I think she said 30 ounces, but this is all I could find was 28 ounces. We also need a four ounce can of tomato paste. This is a little over four ounces and I have most of it left, so I'm just gonna squeeze the rest of this in there. Okay, now we're gonna add in two tablespoons of the dub sauce, wish to share. A can of diced green chilies. Let's add in some minced garlic. We need three cups of chicken broth. This is a four cup container, so We'll use about three-fourths of it. She said to use about a tablespoon of this Creole seasoning. You could always use more if you want more heat. But since we've already added in some jalapeno, I'm just gonna go with about a tablespoon of it. Let's stir all of this around. Lastly, I've got these thin sliced chicken breasts that are already trimmed and ready to go. We're just gonna place those directly in here. And then we're gonna cook this on low for about two hours. That should cook these chicken breasts since they are so thin. And then after that time, we'll come back in and put in our rice and our smoked sausage and let it cook for another two hours and then dinner will be ready. Okay, it's been a couple of hours. It just went over to warm. So we're gonna open this up and take our chicken out and cut it up and put it back in. Your chicken may not be completely done at this point and that's okay because it's gonna be going right back in and it's gonna be cooking for two more hours but you just wanna go ahead and get it cut up into smaller pieces. We're also going to slice up this Cajun style andouille sausage uh, you can use whatever smoked sausage she didn't spe specify. This is just the one that I chose. You do need 12 ounces, so I'll need this entire thing. And a cup and a half of rice. Now let's add in our chicken. Now that we've got everything added back in, I'm just gonna give it a quick stir. And we're just gonna cook this on low for another two hours, two to three hours, just depending. You just wanna check and make sure that your rice gets done. And once it's done, the dish is done. Okay, y'all, it is time for dinner. Steven's gonna go ahead and plate this up for us. Now, let me be really transparent with you. After two hours, the rice was not done for me. So I put it back in for another hour and I changed it to high and it is perfect. Mm. Mm hmm yes. <laughs> Very spicy. Is it? Lots of flavor. Okay. Definitely, um, spicy gumbo okay oh really good tons of flavor i love this this is great there is so much flavor packed in here mm -hmm. that's delicious yes and we're gonna have a lot of leftovers so it's a good thing we like it huh mm -hmm. <laughs> that's really good tonight we are having tuscan tortellini soup this one is super simple we're gonna dump everything into the crock pot with the exception of the tortellini and the spinach we will add those closer to time to eat but let's do it I believe this is a six quart slow cooker crock pot, I'm pretty sure. To the bottom, we're gonna add one pound of chicken breasts. This entire container of chicken broth, you need four cups, two cans of diced tomatoes, one small onion that I diced, a tablespoon of minced garlic, one cup of heavy cream, a half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese, one tablespoon of Italian seasoning. We need about a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of pepper. And that is it, y'all. I'm just gonna stir this up a little bit. We're gonna put a lid on this and this is gonna cook on high for five to six hours. We'll shred our chicken at the end of that time and then we'll add in tortellini and some spinach. And tonight's dinner is gonna be so good. Okay, it is now time to shred our chicken. It is done cooking completely for sure. So I'm just gonna go in with this mix and chop tool 
It works really well to shred chicken. Now let's add in our tortellini. You need 18 ounces of tortellini. I've just got cheese tortellini. This is refrigerated tortellini. It was not frozen. I'm sure you could use frozen, but it would probably need to cook a little bit longer because it would cool everything down so incredibly much. I'm gonna add in spinach. I am really weird. Let me know below if you're weird too, like me, and you don't like the stems. Not a fan of the stems. So I'm just gonna stand here and kind of tear off stems and add it in. And I'll meet you back here in just a little bit. It says to let it cook for another hour. I don't know if I'll let it cook for another hour entirely because I'm hungry, but there we go. Mmm. 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 Oh, wow. Yes, that's good. That's soup. <laughs> Lots of flavor in that. Wow. So that Tuscan flavor mm -hmm. is definitely in there. It's It's got that tomatoey, creamy. Yes. And then you got the tortellini with the little surprise inside. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm excited to try this. It smells so good. Like, it smells tomatoey, but it also smells very creamy. It just... Uh, the house has been smelling amazing, so I'm gonna give it a try. Cole isn't here, unfortunately, but I think he would really like this one. Can I help you? Do you need something? You don't need nothing. Lou. <laughs> this is something you would get at an Italian restaurant good. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh man, this would be perfect on a really cool fall day or winter day. Tonight I am doing a crock pot sausage and potatoes recipe. I'm going to be halving the recipe, so I'm not going to use this whole bag. Um, I'm only using one kielbasa sausage because it calls for two. You get the drift. But I'll link the recipe below. The recipe originally feeds eight. Obviously there's three of us. We don't need it, so that's why I'm halving it. I've been letting my hash browns sit on the counter for the past couple of hours just to kind of thaw them out. Um, it calls, the original recipe calls for 30 ounces of hash browns. This is 26 and I need about half of this bag. Now it calls for one whole can of cheddar cheese soup. So I won't use quite the whole can. Now I need some evaporated milk. It calls for, I'll need about five ounces, which is exactly the size that I have. A couple of cloves of minced garlic. And lastly, it says salt and pepper. I'm gonna use Auntie Nono's. You, you know I love this um, seasoning blend. I just think it's really good, so we're gonna use this. I'm just gonna mix all of this together. Now we're just gonna add in our kielbasa sausage and stir that all together and then we're just gonna dump it in the crock pot. I am gonna spray my crock pot first with some non-stick spray. But that's it, y'all, and dinner will be ready. I'll probably make, I don't know if I'll make some green beans on the side, I'll figure something out for the side tonight, but yeah, this is really easy and hopefully really tasty. Okay, you could do this on low for six hours or you could do what I'm doing on high for three hours. I know it says four, but it is 2.13. Dinner will be ready right around five o'clock. It's gonna be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cheesy potato goodness. This is amazing. <laughs> Are you serious? It's really this is, good. This is so good. Where did you find this? I just found it online, Pinterest, you know me. Keep it. Keep it. Mm -hmm. That's always a good thing. Mm -hmm. So that, that tells me it's two thumbs up mm -hmm. if you say keep it. Hold up, hold up, hold up. There we go. There we go. The creamy cheesiness of the potatoes. And then we got the, the sausage. What kind of, what is that? Is it just kielbasa? Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff, huh? Mm-hmm. All right. I'm going to give it a try. I love it. 
I wasn't expecting the sausage taste to be so infused into the potatoes. I don't know why I wasn't expecting that. I mean, it cooked in there all day, but that was a nice surprise. The potatoes don't just, they're not bland, just cheesy potatoes. They have that sausage flavor. It's so good. Tonight's dinner is called tomato and basil chicken. So we're gonna cook this chicken low and slow, and then it's gonna be served over pasta. I have some angel hair pasta that we're gonna serve it over. I'm really excited about this one. I love a creamy tomato basil soup, but let's give this a shot. This is a really simple recipe where we're just kind of throw everything in there together, and four hours later, dinner is ready. So let's get started. The first thing I need are Italian style diced tomatoes, just a 14 and a half ounce can. We're not going to drain it. Next, you just need about three fourths a cup of a pasta sauce. I'm just gonna use this Prego. Is it Prego or Prego? Are you laughing at me? Like, Prego is what I call somebody when they're pregnant. Is that Prego or is that Prego? I don't know. Okay, anyway, moving on. This next part, it's up to you what you use. I'm gonna be using heavy cream or you could use evaporated milk, but you need three-fourths a cup. I hope I have three-fourths a cup left. I think I do, like I think it's really close. Oh, it's like perfection. <gasps> Look at that, three-fourths a cup. Into my heavy whipping cream, I'm gonna add in two tablespoons of cornstarch. I'm gonna whisk that together really quickly. Now we're just gonna pour this directly into the sauce. And we're gonna stir in our seasonings. I have, it's all mixed together now. <laughs> I have a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of basil, dried basil, and a fourth a teaspoon of black pepper. I'm just gonna stir all of this together. I'm using my, or my smaller slow cooker today. I think this is a four quart. And lastly, I'm just gonna add in our four chicken breasts and submerge it down into the sauce. And that's it, y'all. Put the lid on and I'm gonna cook this on low for four hours. Guess who forgot the garlic? Steven would not let me live that down. Uh-oh, he just heard me. <laughs> <laughs> he would not be okay with that. So we're gonna add the garlic in. Wow, that's really good. That's restaurant quality in my opinion. Very, very good. The sauce is amazing. Really balanced, lots of flavor. I mean, tomato, basil, a little bit of the garlic. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's really, really, really good. So this one's a keeper. Definitely. All right. Great alternative to spaghetti, for sure. Mm. Cole is in the other room, but he came in here because he's already tried it. <laughs> and he just wanted us to know that he approves. All right, I'm gonna give it a shot, babe. So I agree. This is so incredibly good. It's very creamy and very smooth. In our family, we like to kick things up a notch. So next time I make this, I'm gonna add some red pepper flakes to it. I think that would make it even better. It would make it just pop. So really the only cooking part I have to do before I put everything in the crock pot is to cook up this pound of ground beef. The recipe does not call for onion, but I, we always love to cut up onion and brown it with the ground beef, so that's what I'm gonna do. And then the rest is just kind of throwing it all in there and forgetting about it. At this point, you would chop up your jalapeno if you were using one, and y'all know I love jalapeno, but the one that I had in the fridge had gone bad, so we aren't adding jalapeno this time. One other thing I need to do is I've got this one pound of Velveeta cheese. I am going to cube it, and I've got our skillet heating up over on the stove, and while that's doing its thing, I'm gonna cube this really quickly. Okay, our skillet is nice and hot. I'm also gonna go ahead and add in our onion. While I'm waiting on this to brown up, I'm gonna go ahead and open all of our cans. Each of these cans, the recipe said, does not need to be drained, which makes it even easier. The recipe calls for a pack of taco seasoning, so I'm just gonna use about three tablespoons. The recipe doesn't specify when you're supposed to put it in, but I figured I would go ahead and just put it in with my taco meat here, or my ground beef here. 
Um, instead of trying to just stir it in with the unmelted cheese, I just feel like that would be a little bit harder. So I'm gonna add that in here. Okay, that is almost done. We're gonna let it finish up and head over to the crock pot. Okay, let's put all of our ingredients in here. I'm gonna spray it first with a little bit of Pam. First, I'm gonna add in our cheese. Next, I'm gonna add in our ground beef. I'm just gonna kinda drain it as I go. I've got a can of corn that has not been drained. It's only eight and a half ounces. It's not the larger can. A 14 and a half ounce can of diced tomatoes with green chilies. A can of light red kidney beans. And one can of stewed tomatoes. This is 14 and a half ounces. This is where you would throw in your jalapeno if you had that. And you know what? Since we don't have the jalapeno, I think I am gonna add a little heat to this. I'm gonna put in just a little bit of cayenne pepper. This is definitely optional. It's not even on the recipe, but just because we like things a little spicy. Okay, this is going on low for four to five hours, or you could always do it on high for three hours. I like how thick the soup looks. It's gonna be really flavorful, I have a feeling. Cole just said it's really hot, so be careful. Be like very careful. Wow. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tons of flavor. I love the, the thickness. I mean, you can tell that it's gonna be very rich in flavor because of the consistency of it. I love that, and it is. It is packed with flavor. It's really good. Yay, I'm so glad. Oh, you're gonna love it. Well, it's nice and spicy, mm -hmm. but not too much. I added a little bit of cayenne. It did not call for it, but I added it in there. Mm -hmm. You're well, welcome. You did good. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, baby, so I've made taco soup for years, and this kind of reminds me of taco soup. Which one do you like better? This is better than taco soup, what? in my opinion. It's better than taco soup. It's got, there's this creamy, rich, flavor in this that you don't get in the taco soup. Yeah. Taco soup is almost reminiscent of just vegetable soup with a little kick to it, yeah. but this is... Over the top. Over the top because of the cheese and the creaminess of it. <clears throat> it's really good. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you aren't already subscribed, and I will see y'all next time. Bye.